uh, today's discussion is for uh, critical speed of simply supported rotor with both uh, side overhang in the previous videos we have seen the critical speeds for simply supported rotor without overhang and uh, critical speed for simply supported rotor with uh, one side overhang so in this uh, video we will see how the critical speed of simply supported rotor with both side overhang is calculated Uh, this is picture for or a sketch for simply supported rotor with uh, both side of around where these two are bearings and we we had left hand side and right hand side of around and uh, rotor these are the assumptions for uh, rotor a rotor is considered flexible that means bearings are rigidly supported and uh, displacement of shaft at bearing location are zero however there will be deflection at other location of the shaft uh, this is a general methods which provides first critical speed as well as higher mode of critical speed with great accuracy and another assumption is the moment of inertia of disk is not considered that means mass of disk is considered as a point mass with that assumption we can calculate the critical speeds however the discussion is broadly divided in three category one is theory part another is a procedure hence where we know what are the steps to be followed for calculation of critical speed and finally this is the calculation part where we'll use the example to find the critical speeds of the rotor so this is theory part and this is general methods if you see the rotor with both side overhang it has three span a span number 1 between left hand side of overhang and the bearing that means if you look at this this is station number 0 to station number 10 is called a span 1 then between the bearing this is span number 2 where which which has designated as station number 10 to station number 20 now the another, another overhang that is on right hand side that is station number 20 to station number 30 this is a, a span number 3 so we in this arrangement we have three number of a span a span 1 a span 2 and a span 3 these are the general expression for shear force bending moment and slope and deflection the expression a derivation part is done in the previous videos so we have not considered in this video shear force at station n at n is called vn is equal to vn minus 1 plus mn minus 1 into omega square into y n minus 1 bending moment is mn is equal to mn minus 1 plus vn into ln and slope at station n theta n is equal to theta n minus 1 plus beta into beta n into mn minus 1.2 plus mn open to break close then lastly deflection at station n is yn is equal to yn minus 1 plus theta n minus 1 into ln plus beta n into mn minus 1 upon 3 plus mn upon 6 break close into ln these are the general expression for shear force bending moment slope and deflection now the boundary condition at station number 0 starting point of a span 1 so boundary condition is k y0 is equal to minus v 0 equation 1 c theta 0 is equal to m 0 equation number 2 where k and c are stiffness constant and uh, since it is a free end so k 0 c 0 from equation 1 to v 0 and m 0 v 0 is 0 and m 0 is 0 now a span one a starting point the initial um, assumption or initial uh, value is shear force v0 is 0 m0 is 0 theta 0 is 0 but deflection y0 is 1 then part 2 of the station number 0 we can assume shear force v0 is 0 m0 is 0 slope theta 0 is 1 and deflection y0 is 0 
with this injunction we can start cal calculating the stations from 0 to 10. Now the mode shape of span 1 and bending moments and slope at common point of span 1 and 2. Shear force bending moment slope and deflection at any point in the span in the linear function of 4 assumed quantity at left hand side of a span that is in this case is station number 0. So deflection point deflection, deflection at any point n or a station n in the span y n is equal to a n v0 plus b n m0 plus c n n theta 0 plus d n y0 where a n b n c n and d n are numerical constant. So deflection y0 y n is equal to y n part 1 into v0 plus y n part 2 into theta 0. This is equation number 3. When n is equal to 10 of span 1, so y n is 0, y n part 1 is equal to y 10 part 1 and y n part 2 is equal to y 10 part 2. So v0 is equal to minus y 10 part 2 into theta 0 upon y 10 part 1. So replacing v0 in equation number 3, general equation for the sharp deflection, yn bracket start yn part 2 minus yn part 1 into y10 part 2 upon y10 part 1 bracket close into theta 0. Assume theta 0 is 1, so mode sip yn is equal to yn part 2 minus yn part 1 into y10 part 2 upon y10 part 1. This is equation number 4. So with this equation, we can calculate the mode sip of critical speed for the span number 1. Bending, similarly, bending moment mn is equal to mn part 1 into v0 plus mn part 2 into theta 0 equation number 5. Replacing v0 in the equation, general equation for bending moment mn is equal to we can start mn part 2 minus mn part 1 into y10 part 2 upon y10 part 1 minus close into theta 0. Again, assume theta 0 is 1. So mn is equal to mn part 2 minus mn part 1 into y10 part 2 upon y10 part 1 bracket close. So bending moment at a station 10, m10 is equal to m10 part 2, m10 part 2 minus m10 part 1 into y10 part 2 upon y10 part 1. Similarly, slope at station 10, theta 10 is equal to theta 10 part 2 minus theta 10 part 1 into y10 part 2 upon y10 part 1. No boundary condition at common point span 1 and 2 and a static point of span 2. Boundary condition for a starting station of span 2 k y 10 is equal to minus v 10 equation number 6 c theta 10 is equal to m 10 equation number 7 k and c are stiffness constant. So simply supported end at a station number 10 k is infinity c is 0 so y 10 is 0, m 10 is 0 from equation 6, 7. So boundary condition at common point is of span 1, 2, that is station number 10. Due to sharp continuity in common point, station is 10. Y 10 span number 2 is equal to y 10 span number 1, 8, equation number 8. Sorry. Theta 10 span 2 is equal to theta 10 span 1, equation number 8, and y 10 span 2 is equal to y 10 span 1 equation number 9. Due to bearing reaction and common point station is 10, k y 10 is equal to minus v 10 span 2, sorry, minus bracket start, v 10 span 2 minus v 10 span 1 bracket close is equation number 10, and c theta 10 is equal to bracket start m10 span 2 minus m10 span 1 bracket close is equation number 11 but again k and c are constant so at bearing k is infinity c is 0 so with that boundary condition and from equation number 8 to 11 8 through 11 we can get theta 10 span 2 is equal to theta 10 span 1 y10 span 2 is equal to y10 span 1 and m10 span 2 is equal to m10 span 1. Please note that y10 span 2 or y10 span 1 is 0 because it is bearing condition. So for a span to a starting point, this following is the assumption. v10 is 1, 
m10 is 0 theta 10 is 0 y 10 is 0 for part 2 this is part this is for part 1 now part 2 at station number 0 uh, station number 10 v10 is 0 m10 is equal to m10 of a span 1 theta 10 of a span theta 10 of a span 2 is equal to theta 10 of a span 1 and deflection at a station number 10 y10 is equal to y10 of a span number 1 which is 0 so we have now initial condition for uh, part 1 and part 2 at a station number 10 and so we can calculate shear force bending moment slope and deflection for all station from 10 to 20 now the mode shape of a span number 2 and bending moment and slope at common point of a span 2 and 3 deflection of shaft yn is equal to yn part 1 into v10 plus yn part 2 into theta 0 is equation number 12 when n is 20 of a span 2 yn is 0 yn part 1 is equal to y20 part 1 and yn part 2 is equal to y20 part 2 so v10 is equal to minus y20 part 2 into theta 0 upon y20 part 1 so replacing v10 in equation number 12 general equation of deflection of shaft yn is equal to bracket star y n part 2 minus y n part 1 into y20 part 2 upon y20 part 1 bracket close theta 0 so, so theta 0 is 1 let's say assume the mode shape is equal to y n is equal to y n part 2 minus y n part 1 into y20 part 2 upon y20 part 1 but close this equation number 13 bending moment similarly you can write mn is equal to mn part 1 into v10 plus mn part 2 into theta 0 equation number 14 replacing v10 in equation number 14 general expression for bending moment mn is equal to bracket start mn part 2 minus mn part 1 into y20 part 2 upon y20 part 1 very close theta 0 assume theta 0 1 so mn part 2 minus mn part 1 into y20 part 2 upon y20 part 1 so bending moment at station number m20 at this 20 is m20 is mn20 part m20 part 2 minus m20 part 1 into y20 part 2 upon y20 part 1 similarly slope at station number 20 theta 20 is theta 20 part 2 minus theta 20 part 1 into y20 part 2 upon y20 part 1 so we through which we can calculate the uh, bending moment and slope at station number 20 and also as well mode shape of shaft from station number 10 to 20. now the boundary condition at common point of a span 2 and 3 that is a station number 20 and a starting point of span 3 that is 20. same boundary condition k y20 is equal to me uh, minus v20 equation of 15 c theta 20 is equal to m20 the equation number 16 k and c are a constant at uh, station number 20 it is again bearing so k is infinity c is 0 with that y20 is 0 m20 is 0 from equation 15 16 due to sharp continuity and common point of a station is 20 so y20 of a span 3 is equal to sorry y uh, y20 of span 3 is equal to y20 of span 2 17 equation number y20 of sorry uh, for sorry, sorry theta 20 of span number 3 is equal to theta 20 of span number 2 equation number 17 and y20 of span number 3 is equal to y20 span number 2 equation number 18 due to bearing reactions in common point station is 20 so k y20 is equal to minus bracket start v20 span 3 minus v20 span number 2 bracket close equation number 19 and c theta 20 is equal to but m20 span 3 minus m20 span 2 bracket close is equation number 20 at bearing k is infinity and c is 0 with the so bond with boundary condition which is span number 2 and equation number 70 through 20 we can get theta 20 span 3 is equal to theta 20 span 2 y 20 span 3 is equal to y 20 span 2 and m 20 span 3 is equal to m 20 span 2 
for a span 3 a starting point m20 these are the boundary condition or initial assumption v20 is 1 m20 is 0 theta 20 is 0 and y20 is 0 for part 1 for part 2 v20 is 0 m20 of part 2 is equal to m20 of part sorry m20 of part 3 is equal to m20 of part 2 theta 20 of part 3 is equal to theta 20 of part 2 and theta y20 of part 3 is equal to y20 of part 2 is equal to 0. So these are the initial conditions through which we can calculate shear force bending moment, slope and diffraction from the shaft from the station 20 to 30 and also calculate the shear force at infinite small distance beyond 30 that is 31. Now more shape and bending moment at last station for span 3. So we have to know the more shape of span 3 as well as bending moment at the last station for span 3. Same way, shear force at infinite is small distance beyond the last station at 30 that is 31. So V31 is equal to V31 part 1 into V20 plus V31 part 2 into theta 0 this equation number 21 where station V30, uh, station number 31 is infinite small distance beyond station 30 at free end for a span number 3 but V31 is 0 and so V20 is equal to minus V31 part 2 into theta 0 upon V31 part 1 so deflection of shaft Yn is equal to Yn part 1 into V20 plus Yn part 2 into theta 0 equation number 22. So replacing V20 in equation number 2, 22 general equation of shaft deflection Yn is equal to bracket start Yn part 2 minus Yn part 1 into V31 part 2 upon V31 part 1 bracket close into theta 0 assume theta 0 is 1. So mode set for a span number 3 Yn is equal to Yn part 2 minus Yn part 1 into v31 part 2 upon v31 part 2 equation number 23 bending moment similarly we can write mn is equal to mn part 1 into v20 plus mn part 2 into theta 0 is equation number 24 replacing v20 in equation number 24 general equation for the bending moment mn is equal to bracket stand mn part 2 minus mn part 1 into v31 part 2 upon v31 part 1 bracket close theta 0 assume theta 0 is 1 so mn is mn part 2 minus mn part 1 into v31 part 2 upon v31 part 1. So bending moment at last station at 30 that is m30 is equal to m30 part 2 minus m30 part 1 into v31 part 2 upon v31 part 1. This is equation number 25. So with this we can calculate the bending moment at last station that is station number 30. And we can also use this equation for the mode shape for last span that is span number 3 for shaft deflection. Now these are the theory part now procedures. We have to see how we can calculate this. Simply supported with both side overhang. Simply supported with both side overhang having sorry not two three number of span by mistake it is written two three number of shaft span one span in between the bearing second for between free and left hand bearing and third is the in between the free end and right hand bearing mass is allocated different stations denoted as m0 m1 m2 to m30 length of shaft section denoted as l1 l2 l30 and diameter shaft is denoted as d1 d2 up to d30 so you can see a span 1 a span 2 and span 3 and these are the diameter different diameter and the station number and corresponding mass and length between two stations now steps for calculating uh, critical speed number of station are chosen as for the convenience and more than number of station and the more the accuracy critical speed typically station from 0 to 10 are chosen as reasonable accuracy for each shaft spin note the 0 to 10 station for for our, our look 0 to 10 oh by mistake it is in please note that 10 and 20 not 0 to 10 10 and 20 are location bearing for uh, 
one for a span one this song in fact 0 to 10 is for a span 1 10 to 20 is span 2 and uh, 20 to 30 is span 3 bearing location are 10 and 20 so you can correct this this statement this something is wrong here mass of segment and disc are considered as a point mass at each station mass of shaft segment is equal to density of shaft into cross section area into length of shaft between the station mass is allocated at each station such that the total mass of sharp segment is equally distributed on each side of station in addition if additional mass is alloc allocated for a particular station then mass is added in the station let's a mass at a station denoted as m0 m1 m2 up to m30 calculate the area moment of inertia of each sharp segment that is i is equal to pi by 64 d to the power 4 m unit is m to the power 4 where d is diameter of shaft in meter calculate the flexibility constant for each shaft segment beta is equal to l upon ei where unit is 1 upon newton meter where l is the length of shaft segment in meter is a young modulus of elasticity in pascal now for the span 1 station number 0 to 10 Calculation in two segment part one and part two select the suitable value for angular velocity omega radian per second part one for Span one station number zero to ten assume initial condition for station zero shear force zero bending moment zero slope theta zero deflection y zero one meter So a station one shear force is v v1 is equal to v0 plus mn in m0 into omega square y0 bending moment mg m1 is equal to m0 plus l1 v1 l1 and slope theta 1 is equal to theta 0 plus beta 1 bracket stun m0 by 2 plus m1 by 2 bracket close and deflection y1 is equal to y0 plus beta 1 bracket start m0 by 3 plus m1 by 6 bracket close into l1 plus theta 0 l1 so in this way we keep on calculating shear force bending moment slope and deflection until station number 10 part 2 of a span 1 station number 0 to 10 initial condition is for a station 0 shear force 0 bending moment that is v0 0 m0 0 theta 0 1 and deflection y0 0 for a station number 1 Shear force V1 is equal to V0 plus Mn M0 into omega square Y0 bending moment M1 is equal to M0 plus V1 L1 slope theta 1 is equal to theta 0 plus beta 1 beta 1 bracket sign M0 by 2 plus M1 by 2 bracket close and deflection Y1 is equal to Y0 plus beta 1 bracket start M0 by 3 plus M1 by 6 bracket close into L1 plus theta 0 into L1 so in this way we keep on calculating shear force bending moment slope and deflection until station number 10 now for a span number 2 that is station number 10 to 20 part 1 for a span number 2 assume initial station number 10 shear force v10 is 1 bending moment m10 is 0 slope theta 10 is 0 Deflection y10 is 0. Station number 11. Shear force v11 is v0 plus v, v11 is equal to v10 plus m10 into omega square into y10. Bending moment m11 is m0 plus m10 plus v11 into l11 and theta 11. Slope theta 11 is equal to theta 10 plus beta 11 into break start m10 upon 2. m10 upon 2 plus m11 by 2. Break close. And deflection y11 is equal to y10 plus beta 11 into bracket stun m10 by 3 plus m11 by 6 bracket close into m11 plus theta 10 into n l11. So in this way, keep on calculating shear force, bending moment, slope, and deflection from station 10 until station 20. Now part two for span two. Station number 10 to 20. Initial condition station number 10 shear force m10 v10 is 0 bending moment m10 is bending moment of span 1 slope 
theta tan is equal to slope theta tan of span 1 deflection y tan is 0 because y tan of a span 1 is also 0 so station number 11 is shear force v11 is v10 plus m10 into omega square into y10 bending moment m11 is equal to m10 plus v11 into l11 slope theta 11 is equal to theta 10 plus theta 11 into break start m10 by 2 plus m11 m11 by 2 break bracket close deflection y11 is equal to y10 plus beta 11 into bracket start m10 by 3 plus m11 by 16 break close into m l11 plus theta 10 into l11 in this way keep on calculating shear force bending moment slope and deflection from station number 10 until station number 20. now span number 3 station number 20 to 30. part 1 for span number 3 assume initial condition station number 20 shear force v20 is 1 bending moment m20 is equal to 0 slope m30 is 0 sorry slope theta 20 is 0 deflection y20 is 0 station number 11 sorry 21 shear force v21 is equal to v20 plus m20 into omega square plus sorry omega square into y20 bending moment m21 is equal to m20 plus v21 into l21 slope theta 21 is equal to theta 20 plus m uh, beta 21 into bracket start, bracket start m20 by 2 plus m21 by 2 bracket close deflection y21 is equal to y20 plus beta 21 into bracket, bracket start m20 by 3 plus m21 by 6 bracket close into l21 plus theta 20 into l21 so in this way keep on calculating shear force bending moment slope and deflection from station number 20 to until station number 30 also calculate shear force at station 31 which is infinitesimal distance beyond station number 30. now part 2 for a span number 3 assume initial condition station number 20 shear force v20 0 bending moment m20 is equal to m20 of a span sorry sorry a span 2 it should not be span 1 m20 of a span 2 by mistake it is written 1 it should be 2 so m uh, m20 of a span 2 slope again m20 is equal to slope m20 of a span 2 it should not be 1 by mistake it is written it should be span 2 deflection y20 is 0 as deflection y20 of a span 2 is also 0 now station number 21 can written as shear force 21 is equal to v20 plus m20 into omega square y20 bending moment m21 is equal to m20 plus v21 into l21 slope theta 1 slope theta 21 is equal to theta 20 plus beta 21 into bracket star m20 by 2 plus m21 by 2 bracket close and deflection y21 is equal to y20 plus beta 21 into bracket star m20 by 3 plus m21 by 6 bracket close into l21 plus theta 20 into l21 so in this way keep on calculating shear force bending moment slope and deflection from uh, from station 20 until station 30 and also calculate shear force at station 31 and which is infinite small distance beyond station number 30 now critical speed bending moment at the last station that is station number 30 m30 is equal to m32 part 2 minus m30 part 1 into v31 part 2 of 31 v31 part 2 upon v31 part 1 so to find the critical speed to find out the suitable value of angular velocity omega such that bending moment at the last station that is m30 
2 becomes 0 and corresponding value of angular velocity is called the critical speed in radian per second to convert the critical speed in rpm just multiply with 60 and divide by 2 pi select the higher value of omega such that the bending moment at the last station that is m30 to become 0 and corresponding value of angular velocity is called the critical speed in radian per second for higher modes in this way more number of critical speeds are calculated now the mode set for critical speeds so sharp deflection of for sharp section that is span 1 that is station number 0 to 10 we can write sharp deflection yn is equal to yn part 2 minus yn part 1 into y10 part 2 upon y10 part 1 this is for only station number 0 to 10 now sharp deflection of sharp 1 no this should be sharp 2 by mistake it is written here 1 from station number 10 to 20 so sharp deflection yn is equal to yn part 2 minus yn part 1 into v20 sorry y20 part 2 upon y20 part 1 this is for span 2 station number 10 to 20 now the sharp six, uh, reflection mode shape of a span number 3 it should not be 2 3 station number 20 to 30 we can written sharp section yn is equal to yn part 2 minus yn part 1 into v31 part 2 upon v31 part 1 so where n denotes the station number where for n is equal to 0 it denotes the station number 0 for n is equal to 1 it denotes the station number 1 and so on so mode shape of shaft is drawn on sharp length on x axis and sharp deflection y axis for particular critical speed this will provide mode shape of that critical speed will you know that please note that the deflection is not the actual deflection of rotor but it is a mode shape of rotor for that particular critical speed now let us understand with an example that is a calculation part understanding through example so rotor is simply supported with both uh, end bearings uh, there is a load of 500 kg at mid uh, between the bearings density and uh, elasticity of shaft is 7.8523 kg per meter cube and 2.1 into 10 to 11 pascal respectively shaft diameter 0 0.165 meter and shaft length between the bearing is 1.8 meter shaft length on left hand free end a from left hand bearing is 1.8 and uh, shaft length from the right hand bearing right hand free end at two right hand bearing is also 1.8 calculate first second third critical speed so these are the sketch of the shaft and we can resolve through calculation so actual uh, rotor needs to be transferred into idealized equivalent system consisting of series of disc connecting with the elastic but massless shaft mass of disc is chosen so as to approximate mass of the actual rotor mass moment of inertia of disc is treated as a negligible so that disc of mass is treated as a point mass these are the assumptions so it has again divided in three span span one two three span one is from station zero to ten span two is from station ten to twenty and span three is from twenty to thirty so the first critical speed is one two zero four rpm where uh, the critical speed or sorry bending moment at last station that is station number 30 is 0 corresponding this is called the first critical speed now this is the critical speed mode shifts x axis is length of the shaft and y axis deflection of the shaft at uh, different stations so this is mode shape for the first critical speed second critical speed is calculated as 1701 rpm at that uh, corresponding angular velocity the bending moment at the last station that is m30 0 so this is the critical speed 1701 rpm this is mode shape for second critical speed x axis is length of the shaft and y axis is deflection but this is not the actual deflection but it is a mode shape Similarly, for the third critical speed is 4386 rpm corresponding this uh, angular velocity the bending moment at uh, last station that is m30 becomes zero So this is mode shape for the third critical speed So x axis is the length of the shaft and y axis is the deflection 
and this is a shape uh, these are the deflection of the shaft at different uh, stations please note that at uh, bearing location the deflection shaft shaft is zero so i hope you have understood about uh, the how to get clutch speed is calculated for uh, simply supported uh, rotor with both side overhang and uh, you need to find out the mode shape as well as bending moment at the last station and you have to choose select uh, a suitable angular velocity so that the crit uh, so that the bending moment at the last station becomes zero so that is called as a critical speed so if you go on selecting higher value of angular velocity such that the bending moment at the last station becomes zero and this in this way you can start, you can calculate more number of critical speeds so thank you thank you for watching